Hello and welcome to Marriage Matters. I'm glad you could join us. My name's Joe. And I'm Andy. And we've been married nearly 25 years now. That's Silver. And so we thought as part of a celebration of that time um, was to kind of go into Marriage Matters because um, we've been through a few things. And so this is really about our experience and what that we'd like to share. And, and hopefully you join in with the conversation. If you'd like to keep up with the stuff that we do as a family, the Berry Bunch, then do like us on Facebook um, subscribe to our YouTube channel or our and as well uh, sign up to the website because we do lots of good stuff including marriage matters now we're very excited obviously being married for 25 years is a big deal it's all good uh, it is it's all good is that um, the right word y- yeah is that's that what right yeah. to say? <laughs> um it's well, all very good yes yes <laughs> but no we're going to be honest uh, and, and and keep it real um as we go through with marriage matters but today um we're starting with longevity and the d word um so andy what's the d word <laughs> the, the d word is not death <laughs> um, D word is is divorce, which is a nice cheery subject to start yes. with. But actually, it's quite an exciting place to start because when you go into your marriage and you say your wedding vows, mm. if you're in a church, then one of the things you do is you say, "Until death do us part." Mm. Now, death can seem quite a scary, quite a negative thing. However, when you think about it from the biblical perspective, actually, death is just the beginning of an eternity with heaven. Mm. So when we're saying "Until death do us part" in the marriage vows, what we're saying is, "Well, we'll be married." until we get to heaven and then when we get to heaven we're going to be with God so yeah. it's going to be even better Yeah, yeah. so actually it's a celebration hmm. more than it is a sort of depressing thing but the divorce thing so one of the things we did a long time ago is you probably have this situation or you can very easily envisage it if you've ever met anybody in the world ever two people are trying to be right about their point of view <laughs> and it gets a bit heated and it gets a bit angry and, and then before you know it in order to win the argument what you say is that's it I'm getting a divorce as if somehow saying that you're going to get a divorce is going to win the argument. It's like thinking it's it's that match point. Mm. And actually saying those words is the most devastating thing you can say to another human being. And the marriage matters thing for us. Uh, we want real talk and real life and real stories. That's what we want to share, some of our mm. own personal history and what we've been through and how God's helped us through that as a, as a, as a husband and wife, as a married couple before God. But the thing about divorce is it is not the beginning of something. It is the ending of something. There isn't mm. something that's a good, it's not something to celebrate when you think, oh, let's get a divorce then because, you know, we're not getting on and we've fallen out of love. And, you know, mm. I was right in that argument and you wouldn't listen to me. And divorce becomes this thing that we used to use, both of us, as a way of winning an argument. And the thing is, when you've been married for a while, one of the real things you realize is you don't need to win arguments because mm. actually, why do you want to argue? If you're, in an, if you're in an argument and you're getting aggressive or you're getting angry or you're getting um, rude in how you're resp- if if you're not acting in love towards another person, you've already failed God. So then going, yes, that's it, we'll get a divorce. You've already lost the argument. Yeah, I mean, obviously it sounds a bit odd to put longevity and the D word together because they seem to be the opposites. <laughs> but actually, in order to have longevity for a marriage to work, uh, we think that you need to take the D word off the table mm. in the sense not using it as a, a way of manipulating, a way of like, oh, oh, it's like a stick, isn't it? Mm. Like, oh, the D word. And so that's kind of, kind of what we're saying is yeah. if we want your marriage to work, let's take the D off the table. So it's that your you plan can... B, isn't it? Yeah. When you get married, it's supposed to be you you and your well in my case my me and my wife against the world and we're going to you know take yeah. the world over and all this stuff that you do when you first get married and if you've got a plan b how much effort are you going to put into plan a if you think well if it doesn't work out we'll get a divorce yeah. how much are you going to really put into that marriage yeah. how much are you going to commit when it when it gets tough and it will get tough mm. when it gets tough are you going to fight for your marriage or are you going to have that little voice in your head well there's always a divorce mm. well if it doesn't work out that's why we took it off yeah. the table because it doesn't help yeah so longevity in the d word we will continue after this break let's pray andy's going to come on and show us how to pray excellent what what have you got there it's my world's atlas okay so i can pray for the world okay you see pray's right. good right okay you're going to show us how to do that then yeah 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 so i've gone i've got me my atlas and if you go to the letter a I, i'm going to start here so yeah and um, um, please god please Bless Aben Ra and Archun and Arbor. What did you like about the story? Bob. 
Bob. You like Bob. And, and the stick. We like sticks. You like the stick. We like sticks a well, lot, I do. Okay, well, we'll try and make sure there's some more stories with sticks in Thank today, you. especially for you. Welcome back. Um, we keep putting that little ditty on for Marriage Matters to give us, a, I suppose, a break, but also to give you time to think about what we're saying. Uh, and so then we can then move on. And obviously, scripture is really important. So, Andy, you've got some scripture for us, haven't you? And so, Joe can remind me what I've just said I'm supposed to be saying next. <laughs> okay, so we've got a couple of scriptures that um, are really, we're quite, we find them quite important. Mm. Um, and I've completely lost the first one. So that's really good. Titus, isn't it? Yeah, there we yeah. go. Titus 3, something. <laughs> we have planned this. We're... Have you lost it? No, well, it's in the other Bible. I'll swap oh. Bibles over. <laughs> Seriously. The... Titus 2, is it? Something. <laughs> I think it's okay, on our website. Here we go. Titus chapter 2. It's like we planned this or something. <laughs> Ch- Titus chapter 2. You must teach what is in accord with sound doctrine. Teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self controlled, and sound in faith, in love, and in endurance. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to too much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can train the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be subject to their husbands so that no one will malign the word of God. Similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled in everything. Set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, serious and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. Mm. What does that mean to you? <laughs> um, it sounds really, uh, for me, I was thinking about it's order, isn't it? That God has a, 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 a from the very beginning in Genesis, there's an order of, of what, where, and, and roles we play and, and positions we have, and it keeps everyone safe. It's, it's like to have children, you have boundaries, you have, you have things in place. And so it helps you to feel safe and know what you're supposed to be doing. And I love that about the younger women, uh, the older women teaching younger women, because we've we've gathered some information, mm. haven't we, and help and support from grandparents along the way. So it's, that's been really helpful. Yeah, we've had some good wisdom along the way. I think one of the things that saddens me about kind of culture at the moment is, there's very much I can do this. I'm independent. I can cope. I can do this by myself. And and sadly, what we've seen as as parents, as people who've been in ministry for a number of years, is there's this move to training children to become independent. So when they hit 18, they can go to university and they can stand on their own two feet. And although at face value that sounds like a good idea, we're actually setting them up to fail in their marriages because if we're teaching people to be independent then we're not teaching the people to be dependent upon God mm. and upon family and, and the church. And that's one of the things that has saddened me. I, I've seen that and I've had conversations with various people that I know more than you. Well, that, that's not really the point. Mm. We're supposed to be working together for God's kingdom. Um, and when we come back to the marriage matters thing and, and marriage is, is specifically, um, we're supposed to depend upon each other. Mm. And other scriptures, which we're not going to uh, pick up on this first one, but other scriptures talk about how um, my body is Joe's and Joe's body is mine. You know, we're supposed to depend upon each other. And when we extend that a bit further, we're not supposed to be independent. We're supposed to be dependent and actually depend upon each other, depend upon Jesus Christ mm. more specifically. Um, the other scripture which we've got, might make your head twist a bit. Um, James, gentle James, <laughs> gentle James, chapter 4, verse 18. Now, listen, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. Which comes back to the the argument and the use of divorce as an argument stopper. If you're using the divorce as, as a way of winning an argument, you're already upsetting your other half. You're already upsetting God. You're already committing a sin. So trying to use that as a, 
you know, that's the end of it. I'm going to finish this argument and win it. That That's just mm. wrong. Um, the other reason why we like this James chapter 4 thing, bit of scripture, is when you first get into your marriage, you have this, you know, if you're newlywed, you're very excited. Hopefully your wedding day's gone well. I've heard enough stories that haven't, but anyway, hopefully you've had a good wedding day and um, and you've gone on your honeymoon, you've had a really good time and you've got to know each other as a couple and before Christ and and then you come back and you, you get into your job and it's all quite good normally. First six months to two years probably, it's very, very good and you're enjoying each other and um, then things start to get a bit more difficult as life becomes a bit more of a grind and all of a sudden all the newness and the excitement goes but we can make these plans for what's going to happen in the future, but we don't actually know. Mm. And when we say, right, I'll get a divorce, what we're saying is we can read the future and we're going to read your future. In fact, we're going to actually tell you what your future is. And we're not supposed to work like that as believers in Jesus Christ. What we are supposed to do is have a whole, it's the idea of holding it loosely, isn't it? Mm. Uh, we're not supposed to control and manipulate. Um, you know, I shouldn't be controlling and manipulating Joe to get what I want. Actually, I should be honoring her and loving her and, Mm. And, and giving her what she needs and putting her first, which is how we're supposed to be as Christians. Well, what, what we're supposed to realise from this James chapter 4 thing for me is marriages, they're quite finite. You know, our lives are alike of mist as we see mm. in other parts of scripture. And we need to be really holding precious those times that we have that are good because there's going to be hard times and there's going to be good times. But we need to be very precious of those good times. So when the difficult stuff comes along, we don't go, well, that's it, I'm getting a divorce. We don't allow our feelings to dictate us, actually. Then we remember, you know what, well, life is quite short. It's quite precious. But let's yeah. appreciate each other. Uh, the scripture that comes to mind is, what, what is it? That what God says in the light, don't forget in the dark, isn't it? So in that beautiful time when you get married, it's all very happy, everything's wonderful. And you have like a honeymoon period, don't they? Oh. Not just the honeymoon, like the week or the two weeks, but actually that first year is, is um, not easy necessarily. You might have some difficulties, but that can be a time, like you say, of of, of, oh. of everything going quite well for you. Um, but remember what you've been taught, that marriage preparation, the scriptures that say stick together, because the, the difficult times come. Um, and the temptation, and I think maybe in a way the D word is the temptation, isn't mm, it? I think so. And, you know, I, we learn from Jesus, he talks about the bride and the bridegroom and, and, and actually being married is an opportunity to grow as Christians, isn't it? <laughs> Through the good times and the bad times. So it's about, you know, being a, a Christian is about commitment, is about discipline, it's about getting through those hard times because quite often God doesn't take us out of problems we have to go through it <laughs> if you want to learn who you truly are if you really want to see what the issues are in your life that God wants to deal with mm. then get married um, it, it's really easy to understand the idea that on the wedding night you get physically naked with each other for the first time but the other thing is you get emotionally vulnerable there are things I know about Joe, and there are things that Joe knows about me that nobody else knows. Joe could destroy and crush me if she chose, and I could do the same to her. How often do we use that in an argument? We get the past and throw it back. Mm. What do you mean you're throwing the past back? Well, that's what we do, isn't it? And we shouldn't do that. God doesn't do that. But we do that. We bring the past back in. Um, and when I think about marriage and I think about the, the early time of our marriage, it was really exciting and everything is kind of in you to just get on with it and, and make mm. the life and set your home up and all that kind of stuff. But if you're not putting Jesus Christ in the center of your marriage, you're setting yourself up for a world of hurt later on. Um, mm. I think we need to really briefly touch on, if you have come to faith and you are already married and mm. um, let's just say your husband is not a Christian, then the Bible's really clear. You need to give your husband an opportunity for a divorce. That's really healthy. That's in the scriptures. Um, that's not what you should try for, but that needs to be there because you are now a completely different person. You are set apart in Christ. But we also know that, um, and I've met enough women now and men who've done this, is when they love their um, respective other half, husbands were loving their wives, that wife can be won to Christ by the gentleness and love of the husband and vice versa. Mm. Um, so don't just throw something away because God loves marriage. Um, and just coming back to that, uh, the the Titus reading one of the things that I'm struck by is my grandparents some of the advice they gave us which I've shared out to many other couples now which was play together pray together 
work together, sleep together, yeah. and a whole bunch of other stuff you're supposed to do together. Mm. Um, and I just want to touch on the play part, because actually when you first get married, it's quite exciting. You've usually got a bunch of friends, you've got the will behind you. Generally, mm. we didn't, that's another episode. <laughs> but generally speaking, you've got the will behind you. And then it starts to get more tricky. But the playful times, those times when we, Joe and I all play we tennis or something, <laughs> just to have a bit of a laugh, mm. they're really valuable. They're really precious. Uh, and actually, they they help a lot. So don't discount playing together. And praying together, okay, there's nothing mm. in the Bible that says that a husband and wife should pray <laughs> together. There's nothing in the Bible that says a husband and wife should read the Bible or pray together. Okay, that's not in there. However... There's lots of things the Bible does and doesn't say. Um, praying and reading scripture with your spouse is a really good way of getting deeper in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. I fell in love with my wife, Joanne, because her love and passion for Jesus Christ excited the Holy Spirit in me. Mm -hmm. That's what I fell in love with. Way before I even really saw Joe, I saw Holy Spirit in her, and that excited the Holy Spirit in me. So we started out mm -hmm. with God at the center. And we read our Bible together and we pray. Not as much mm -hmm. as either of us probably would like. Yeah. But I think it's just one of those, that's just to make sure there's no weight put on that aren't supposed to be there. If you're not reading the Bible and praying together, there's, there's, there's nothing bad there. It is good to read your Bible and pray together, however. And we would definitely heartily recommend it. It's very powerful to have those times mm -hmm. together. But let's just be really clear on a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, those things that aren't actually said, you don't have to read together the Bible. Because yeah. um, sometimes you'll be away. I mean, Joe was working shifts. I was driving a truck and we didn't get to talk to each other much. We didn't get to mm -hmm. read the Bible and pray. We still had a good marriage. So yeah. you need to be able to apply these rules fairly sensibly. Um, but yeah, that's worth saying. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of things that can go against a marriage, isn't there? There are mm. things that come, come up, you know, um, un unfaithfulness. There'll be somebody who's not very happy in their marriage and looking around for something better. Or, I don't know, you have the midlife crises or whatever. Or just different things come around um, and people get stressed and worried and all kinds of things come along. Um, and so we need to work out our marriage. That's what we're saying. You have mm. to work it in order to keep that marriage going. Um, and so, yeah, it's playing together, having time together. And, and I think, you know, it's very hard as a Christian um, because, um, you know, obviously there's a lot that's coming up against us mm. to stop us from staying married because that really helps and is a good thing. It's a godly thing. Mm. Uh, and so prayer is really, really yes. important. Um, and, yeah, you know, he's, he's the Holy Spirit. God is the kind of glue that sticks us together at the centre, isn't it? It's like, yeah. Mm. I mean, I'm sure there are many marriages that continue and, and do the long Jevity, all you know, 50, 60, 70 years who aren't Christians, and, and you know, that's quite quite amazing. But as Christians, I think, um, we do need God to be at the center, um, because you know, it's it's tough otherwise, isn't it? And and so, is prayer that. is key, scripture reading, um, and date night, isn't it? That's oh, another so great thing, isn't it? Date night, <laughs> date night is really important. It's it's one of those things that. Sometimes gets pushed out, and uh, we're going to touch upon this in the in the next little segment when we yeah. talk about tips and resources. But um, date night so important to actually make sure that you you remember to take time with each other. The yeah. way that we see it is really simply. I'm trying if you think about it this way: when you get married, you are the first parts of your relationship, mm. first part of your family. This is God's intention. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean to say if you've got married, and you've already had children, that somehow that's evil and bad and terrible. We're not going into that. We're talking about God's God's best, God's purpose. But let's just say you, you get married and you're a husband and wife. And what was I saying? Um, uh, what you I've said? lost myself. <laughs> we were talking about date night and then you... Oh, there you go, yeah. <laughs> date night. So um, the husband and wife come along first. We are more important. Mm. Our children's um, ability to be contented and satisfied and peaceful and confident and outgoing and all those things has got an awful lot to do with how Joe and I are doing. Why do I say that? Well, if Joe and I are not getting on with each other what's going to happen well there'll be less happiness there'll be more animosity more arguments um, less peace in the family home if we're getting on with each other more and we're having time with each other and putting prioritizing each other then all of a sudden we're much happier more peaceful and the children are more relaxed because the home is more happy and more peaceful um, and we've had those times of difficulty some of the worst times of hostility and animosity was exhaustion um, after a business had failed and we were absolutely shattered and we didn't have a problem with each other. We were just tired mm. and short-tempered. So don't miss that one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, th there's all this stuff that's going to try and get in the way. And the thing is, a, a godly couple, don't forget, the devil wants to destroy you. And he'll get at your time. 
Now, Joe's work shifts. I worked as a truck driver. I was away for two, three, four days at a time. Sometimes mm. Joe worked shifts or crazy hours and we barely saw each other, but we prioritized time with each other when we could have it. So it's perfectly possible to build a marriage. We mm. had a very big phone bill on the mobile <laughs> phones. But anyway, it's very possible to continue to build your marriage, yeah. even if you're not together. But it's making that effort. It's yeah. taking that time. Definitely. Time for another advert. Mm. We love making resources for you to inspire you that you can use in your situation, your home, your church, your family church. Resources that can inspire you, that you can stream, share and download. And we love making it free that everybody can access whatever they may well need. But perhaps there's something we haven't yet covered that you really want us to do. Perhaps a Dave the Dog story for your Sunday school or all age service on a particular Bible topic. Get in touch and let us know and we'll see what we can do. Any monies that we make from commissions like this go straight back into Brady Bunch to make everything else that we do stay free. So let us know what you need. Get in touch. So before the break, we were talking a lot about the importance of prayer. And early on in our, our marriage, I discovered the power of the praying wife um, it, by Stormy O. Martian. And it's a, it's a lovely book for um, wives to pray for their husbands. Um, and in it, it's got chapters and they're very short and easy to read, which is lovely. Um, looking at different areas of your husband's life, so finances, their self-image, um, their faith, their future, uh, trials, lots of different chapters on different... So you could read the whole way through or dip in, and each time you've got scriptures and you've got prayers, which is fantastic. Um, and I read that, and I, I, I really got into the importance of praying for you, Andy, um, and I saw that I saw that change and make a big it. difference, didn't it? Yes. And then later on, I got the little book of prayers. So, you know, if I'm in a bit of a rush, like we've talked about before, you have busy times, don't you, when you hardly yeah. see each other, and I know he's struggling with something, I can just quickly pray something. Um, he was worried about something or fearing something one time, and I just got went up into my room and just prayed this prayer, and I found this really, really helpful. And then Stormy Martian wrote a book for men, which is brilliant. <laughs> and what she did, which was really fabulous, she, she took all the chapter headings from um, the book for the praying wife yeah. and um, she created a book for the praying husband. But what I love is as you go through these chapters, she's put them in order of how a wife would want to pray, be prayed for, and how a husband would want to be prayed for. That makes sense? It's like a list of priorities. Mm. So uh, at the top of... Um, this praying husband, the mm -hmm. first thing the husband should be praying for their wife would be for their husband. <laughs> so praying for the wife and her relationship with you. Yeah. And then it moves on to her spirit and emotions. And what she's done is she's gone to lots and lots of um, uh, women and said, well, what, what's the, what, if these are 20 headings, can you put them in the, in the most important at the top and the least important at the bottom? And then she's mm -hmm. put them into a chapter order oh. in the book. So the stuff at the top is what, generally speaking most wives would want you to pray for and then um, conversely the praying wife book it's put in the order of what most husbands would like their wives to pray for in order of priority mm. mine has got so many creases it is ridiculous <laughs> um, but I find it really helpful because yeah. it just helps me to remind myself that Joe is not me that we are intrinsically different she is female I am male she is woman I am man she is wife I am husband we are very very different we have different outlooks on life mm. and this is a great book uh, great resource yeah, highly recommend it and the 15 second kiss <laughs> so do you want to tell them about the poison oh well yeah that was a funny story so I'm not the most romantic um, you know in our marriage uh, I think you, you're more romantic than I am um, but I had a moment um, I one... cry a lot <laughs> I cry at films one Christmas I was walking through Shrewsbury Town um, City Centre or Town Centre I should say and there was some a guy selling um, mistletoe and it was only a pound so I thought, oh, do you know what? You know, I could bring that home and we can have a kiss under the mistletoe. So I brought it back. <laughs> I think the children, our, our boys were quite surprised at what I'd done because it was rather romantic of me. Um, but then they laughed because um, apparently mistletoe's a poison, isn't it? Yes, it'll kill you. 
<laughs> Let's kiss under the dangerous plant. That's really funny. But it's romantic. And yeah, that was nice. <laughs> but that started us off on the 15 second kiss. Mm. I don't know where this started. I saw it on a, a really good resource called The Fierce Marriage, ah. uh, which is a Christian um, couple who do some really great stuff. Go, go and check out The Fierce Marriage website. But I remember hearing it there, and I don't know where they found it from either, but we started to do the 15 second kiss. And it's really, really simple. It's kissing for 15 <laughs> seconds, okay? And what we started doing was, we, because our kids always love us to be loving towards each other, um, I don't understand children who stop parents from showing physical affection i mean that, our kids have never done that we wouldn't tolerate that for a second um, and actually they actively encourage us so when we hadn't done a 15 second kiss or let me be specific when they hadn't seen us doing the 15 second kiss mum dad come on and they push us together <laughs> so we can have our 15 second kiss and the thing is 15 seconds of kissing in front of your kids is a great way of reconnecting it's a great way of saying the priorities in your life and it's a great way of stopping hushing pausing and Connecting with a person that yeah. you're supposed to care for the most in this life. Yeah. That's great. There you go. Top tip. Top tip. 15 Thanks second kiss. <laughs> Many times a day. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. The point of this scripture is that while physical training is good, it is beneficial for us. It keeps us fit, keeps us healthy. It's not nearly as beneficial as spiritual training and all that makes up training for godliness, such as reading our Bibles, praying, and going to church. And that is the point of endurance. It is to show how we can maintain self-discipline and how we can endure through our training for godliness. With that in mind, go check it out. Okay, this is where we conclude. Um, we've just got a few minutes just to, to finish up and to wrap up um, this one, this episode on longevity and the D word. Um, so really what we've been talking about is um, listening to um, older women and older uh, men mm -hmm. to kind of get our heads around what marriage should be like. So we listen to our grandparents, um, you know, keep going through the tough times. Um, we talked about date uh, night being a uh, a key spending time together we said about God being at the centre um, and, and scriptures that help us and support us uh, we've given some top tips about the 15 second kiss let us how, know how you get on with that and the resources the books and we will do that every week mm. um, I think that's covered everything hasn't it but it's just keeping that D word off the table um, because we use it as a, as, a, as a sledgehammer really don't we just to get what we want and that's not that's not right because um, that's not going to help long <laughs> okay, so let me ask you one difficult question to finish. Oh, no. <laughs> What's the most tense moment in your life of our marriage where divorce was really what you wanted and how did you not go for that? Wow. I guess, I mean, I just, I, I guess I must have got myself into such an angry state and so upset about something I can't even think of a time. Um I just, I suppose it was escape route. I just wanted out of the, the, the experience, the emotional torment, isn't it? And just want, want out and somehow at the time felt, but I guess also just to hurt you, isn't it really? I think if I'm honest uh. and, and I think sometimes crying wolf, cause I'm saying it and I'm not sure that I am really going to pull through with it. Cause I'm thinking, well, what am I going to do? But it just sounds really good at the time. <laughs> yeah. It's an exclamation mark and we don't need exclamation marks in our marriage. We need commas. Yeah. Because it's a journey, and that journey takes a long time. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, get divorce off the table. That's that's the plan. Mm. Um, that's not to say that there aren't situations where that's appropriate. We're not we're not going to do that. We're talking about the plan for marriage. Yeah. Um, we, we're not going to go into that. We're not counsellors. We are two Christians who love Jesus Christ, who love each other, who love marriage, who love supporting people in marriage. And what is God's passionate best mm. for our marriage and for your marriage? And how can the good stuff and the bad stuff that we've been through help you in your marriage? Yeah. And that's the point. We're supposed to be walking together. So what's your, um, what's the best part of your marriage so far? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I suppose, to be honest, coming to 25 years, I'm quite chuffed that I've, we've, we've lasted this long. <laughs> I'll try not to spit it out. <laughs> 
I, I was like, oh, wow, what an achievement. Me before you said <laughs> Sorry, that. I didn't know I was going to say that. It's quite an achievement. I'm quite chuffed with myself, you know, like I've lasted this long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. That's really making me feel great before I go to bed, isn't it? Well, what's the best thing for you? I think it was it was <laughs> I think it was the moment when we went on honeymoon, it was just you and me. Mm. And I think it's that moment of well, it's that oh crap moment, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> to be honest of We've done it. Oh, we're married. Can't get away. <laughs> we're stuck. There is that moment I had. But then there's that excitement of the journey ahead. Yeah. And the life ahead. Um and I think for me, it was it was getting married. We had a house sorted, uh, which was exciting because mm. it was huge. And we lived in a bedroom for a month or two because we had no furniture because, you know, <laughs> newlyweds. I made furniture out of boxes. I think I think that, that first month of our marriage mm. was the most exciting. Um, another episode we're going to do, we'll be talking about the problems we had in order to try and get married. But mm. I think for me, it's that first month of being married. It was you and me set with God against whatever problems might come with all the excitement, all the passion of what's going to come and it's really exciting and we're going to make a home and a life and I think it was I think it was the wedding day um, but I think if I was being really honest it was on our wedding day when you were asked do you take this man <laughs> to be your husband and it was the severity of the seriousness of your face as you looked into my eyes and I almost cried on the altar of I'm married it was really exciting but then it's also the responsibility of it i love it i love yeah. being married it's great i love all the stuff about being married it's wonderful mm. the good and the bad the bad's hard but the bad almost part of the good so yeah great there you go yeah it builds us and it's all character building isn't it oh it's character building <laughs> yes my takeaway from this episode is um that apparently the best thing is you've lasted 25 years <laughs> I will I will be satisfied with that. That's fine. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our first episode of Marriage Matters. We've got a whole host of topics that we want to look at. Mm. Um, some of the bad and the good. Um, and we're going to mm. have some tips every week and some resources that you can go away and find. Um, but if you've got a, a topic that you want us to cover, then you can get in touch with us through the website and let us know about that. And we'll try and cover that um, whenever, whenever we can. Yeah. And just to say, you can watch this. You can listen to it on a podcast. Yes. And you can read the transcript when I've finished typing it up. <laughs> so there are loads of ways that you can access Marriage Matters. So I hope you've enjoyed it. We've had yeah. fun. I've had fun. And now I know that Jo is really <laughs> glad that she's lasted 25 years, which is exciting. So I'm looking forward to our anniversary next month. That'll be <laughs> that'll be a stellar day, won't it? There you go. Keep it real. Yeah. Real talk. Thanks for joining us. Bye for Bye now. Bye for now. There are loads of ways to keep in touch with the Berry Bunch. Visit our website and make sure you sign up to the blog and get notified on all our videos, posts, exciting news and seasonal events. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and get told when we post brand new video resources. Take a look over Dingdash, a fabulous place that connects people from all over the world. Like us on Facebook where we hang out and post extra stuff to encourage and inspire you. We're on Instagram too and share extra photos when we're out and about. And if you're enjoying, using or sharing what we do, visit us over on Patreon and you can become part of the extended Berry Bunch family by supporting us with the cost of all we do. Mm -hmm.